currently my job comprises uh, both teaching as well as administration or the academic administration so talking about the teaching first i believe the most rewarding that i find in it is a kind of satisfaction satisfaction that you are a useful member of the society uh, we are educating the young generations of the lawyers it is a teacher who instills that uh, what we say the passion of learning in the students which is very essential be it the critical thinking or innovation of ideas or for the overall development of uh, any society number 2 uh in the course of teaching i believe teacher's passion for learning is also enhanced you know when we teach our students we teach to ourselves also somewhere or the other so our own concepts of various issues uh get sharpened better over the period of time the same sentence which we have been reading gives us a different meaning different perspective and that i say the joy of learning and uh, that is how uh, you feel rewarded uh, for uh, this particular profession i will also add another factor in this and that is that uh, when our students after being graduated and after having worked for a certain number of years attain certain height in their profession we feel elated we the teachers feel elated uh well i take pride in saying that uh, some of my students are now the judges of the high court delhi high court um justice hari shankar justice manoj johari and others and uh, my law school that is a campus law center uh, is regarded as the best uh, at least in asia and uh, the current chief justice of the bhutan supreme court and the very next uh, senior most judge justice penjor happen to be my favorite students uh, so this is about the judiciary but we find uh, our students i hear i'm talking about my students also attaining the heights uh, like the vice chancellors in the private universities so where they rise wherever they are we relate ourselves with them and uh, we feel proud oh this is this is really a great i will say the satisfaction to any teacher so in the nutshell i can say that the students are our wealth our capital and uh, then this profession has always been regarded as a most respectful profession there is a word noble noble profession which is attached with this profession it really earns you respect now coming to my second uh, aspect of the job that is the administration i will very frankly say that there is nothing which is rewarding in this it's a thankless job it is only when we realize that this is a thankless job we can really do something for the institution uh as a guardian as the administrative head of that institution not believing in the policy of the appeasement looking to what my duties are and uh, when you believe uh in doing your duties then you are in bad name so it's like that i think uh the things which are required to be a good law professor 
are the same anywhere um, though there may be some differences uh, with respect to any domestic uh, jurisdiction and uh, uh, before proceeding further and sharing my experiences uh, in this uh, here I would like to sh uh, say that uh, this my law school uh, has uh, really produced uh, very very good teachers excellent excellent teachers uh, i'm also uh, the alumnus of this law school and therefore i can really uh, tell you better in and out of this now i'm reminded of those great teachers who taught me like professor upendra bakshi professor mp singh and others these are the teachers who are world famous teachers and uh, uh, before i f uh, proceed further uh, i mean uh, coming uh, particularly on this uh, good law professors um, i will say it is these kind of teachers um, who have given to the nation the leaders who are serving their uh, the india and there is a testament testament is that today the chief justice of indian supreme court honorable justice ranjan gogoi is our distinguished uh, alumnus along with it there are other nine judges sitting judges i'm talking about at the supreme court so almost one third of the uh, sitting judges of supreme court is a contribution of campus law center uh, it has given uh, solicitor generals mr mohan prasaran who previously happened to be the solicitor general of india mr arun jaitley the current union cabinet minister is again from my law school so whether it is uh, the cabinet ministers judiciary top law officers vice chancellors we feel proud that uh, this is the contribution of my law school what does it mean it means that this is a law school which believes in good teaching and good teaching of course the teachers contribute a lot in that even though there are other factors also which are relevant in this so what i have learned from these great teachers and which i have all through uh, followed in my teaching i will just put it into three four uh, points i will say the first thing is that you should know your subjects thoroughly completely you should be well prepared what you are going to teach there in the class particularly in the initial year of teachings it is very essential that you keep discussing with your senior colleagues your doubts your own doubts and in my those initial years we have learned that uh, you can connect law to anything under the sun from cradle to grave professor bakshi used to tell us this that's absolutely true but perhaps it is before cradle also and after grave because one of the subjects uh, which i have been teaching is the family law the questions of inheritance the question whether this particular woman is occupying the status of widow challenging the validity of the marriage when the husband was alive this question was not raised after the death of the husband this question is coming why because now the property has to be distributed so on and so forth uh secondly i will say that uh, communication should be very good good the meaning of good i will say simple it's here that the role of the teacher really comes in because the students can get knowledge from the books these days what not there is a google baba and a uh, lot more information is uh, available uh, online also but when it is uh, in person particularly in the classes 
the way teacher simplifies the complex things and make the students understand i will say i will relate it to the quality of uh, a good teacher you know sometimes we as a teacher don't enjoy in uh, uh, discussing simple concepts we enjoy more when there is really certain kind of a thing which needs to be told by the teacher to the students why because they cannot understand this stage breaking it simplifying it coming down to the level of the students sometimes and then making them understandable so this transmission of knowledge uh, in the process of communication as professor uh, tripathi my another teacher used to emphasize is very essential uh to be a good uh, teacher and here the law teacher and uh, apart from this uh you see the teacher has to be very honest if he doesn't know the answer to any question put in the class saying no i don't know the answer i'll see it and will uh, tell you in the next class so this honesty in admitting because nobody can know everything under the sun and the teacher as a teachers we learn a lot from the questions of our students so many a times i admit particularly in my uh, initial years i used to admit and then going in the stake hall discussing the senior teachers finding the answer and then this is how when i was saying that we also grow uh academically internally and all that thirdly teacher has to be regular and punctual simple uh yes of course at times teacher may require any leave but it has to be officially intimated to the students and the office and punctuality on the time because in my campus law center we are having one hour lecture so it has to be at least 55 minutes this is what we uh, expect uh, from us and uh, then all of us uh, um, have heard that great saying that a good teacher explains and a great teacher inspires oh yes this is absolutely true our students do get inspired even from the simple words simple gestures of us we are not aware at that particular time but when after some years or many years we meet our students and then they recollect those instances you know that is really again i will say rewarding oh i forget that thing you remember and there are many instances when they say your this sentence has really that great impact on my life and changed uh, my life and uh, and that is a great moment of joy for any teacher uh, inspiration motivation of the students not only of the brilliant but also of the average of every student i mean uh, at what level and at what occasion there is an interaction of the student it's not in the classrooms it is outside the classrooms also now whatever i have said so far was uh, from the point of view of the students the quality of a good law professor but apart from this along with this a good law teacher i think has to be a dynamic person in the sense Uh, to have good publication research publications research projects and then uh, having the network whatever uh, field of study uh, that teacher possesses yes of course i am talking about participation of uh, conference seminars moving away from uh, your own place interacting with other persons and uh, through that exposure enhancing uh, the academic personality of oneself should be there well uh, 
I will split this question into two forms. First at the entry level and then later on. As far as the entry level is concerned, uh, I will say not really so difficult for women with the now increased you know awareness of the women's education and a little bit empowerment of the women though there's a long way to go uh, the women are coming up more and more who are taking up uh, law so if a person irrespective of men or women uh, possesses all uh, everything on the paper uh, the degrees the publication other things then entry at the law profession, uh, there is no this discrimination, I, uh, I believe. Now in my own law school, uh, the ratio of male and female is more in favor of female. But the later part is more important of this question. And that is when it comes to the overall participation of the woman in the whole of the legal profession, then definitely it's very very difficult for the woman to succeed reasons are not far off to find uh, obviously we are talking about a uh, working woman here in the field of uh, law and they are in in teaching profession now this woman has to has also work at home there is a, a little bit change in the society. The change in the society is previously the men were working outside. I'm talking about like 50 years before or 60 years before. And the women were uh, taking care of uh, the household work. But now when the women are also going out and uh, contributing to the family in the economic terms, as a matter of fact, she has to take a double burden and the double burden is that whatever things she had previously been doing at home she has to she has to do herself or she has to supervise because here in India Indian families we do have the concept of those uh, housemates but then you have to supervise that that's one of the thing <clears throat> and uh, another thing is uh, that I will say patriarchal hangover if I, which has to face this uh, educated woman even within educated family uh, if you know so long as a teaching uh, uh, thing is concerned this is perfectly okay with the family with the other persons but if Apart from the family, she has to take care of certain seminar which is going on in the very law school or she has to participate outside and because of which she is late at home. Usually she comes by 5 o'clock and this time she has come say for example by 9 o'clock. Then uh, most of the women till are uh, seen with suspicion. They have to explain. So these kind of uh, patriarchal hangover, as I'm saying, uh, still subsist, though there's a chain. You know, I will say, what is this? It is uh, what is still going on. If a man comes late at home, late than usual hours, the whole family, including wife and everybody at home, uh, takes, oh, he must be tired. He is taken extra care of his comfort the moment he enters the home. But if the working woman I'm uh, talking about uh, is in the same um, um, position, first of all, she has to explain. She has to give the explanation to the female members only, to the husband, to the other persons. Even though the other persons may say in the name of security, safety, we were worried. But then, of course, somewhere or the other, uh, there are studies, we do discuss about this in our various workshops and the gatherings, particularly in my gender justice classes. Uh, they are suspected by none else than by their own husbands. 
and therefore they try to avoid uh, for the teaching it's okay but uh, involvement of these things and if they have to really uh, progress succeed and go out of station out of country then also most of the women still face these kind of the problem it is not light and because of these things if these kind of restrictions are there how can we expect that she will succeed uh, in terms of promotions in terms of climbing the ladder i am aware of very many examples uh, of my classmates of my seniors as well as of my students okay let me talk about my students both were good students and later on uh, they joined the profession both are going brilliantly various kind of students i'm talking about maybe that they have joined the litigation maybe they have joined uh, the corporate firm perfect later on they get married again very good no problem so far as far as their career advancement is concerned as far as the career advancement of the girl is concerned but after the wedding the moment they have a child then those gendered roles come in then it is regarded that now this is your responsibility to look after the child it is not taken as a joint responsibility of both of them and then of course first she will reduce her time from the profession like if it is in the teaching she would like to run away immediately after the classes and will have the excuses if there are other uh, things so many other things for the corporate life of uh, the legal institution uh, and then the man is slowly going up from here they have started till here together but thereafter he is going one by step there first she is stagnant there and then gradually she comes down so this is a level he is going up she is coming down not only with respect to the children uh you know when the children have grown then she is asked again to work she works but what kind of a job she will get we can understand because that is the golden period when she is asked to be away from uh, the professional life and take care of the household was exclusively okay fine okay she joins then uh, yes it's good i appreciate that uh, there is uh, still somewhere a uh, joint family system so when our parents get old then again be, it becomes a responsibility exclusive responsibility in most of the families for the woman to look after them she again has to leave the job so this if the 